It's a funny old world. But where does our funny come from? To find out, eight Kiwi comedians are tracing their ancestry across the globe to unearth the roots of their humour. If my ancestors didn't move to New Zealand, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. They'll find themselves. Everyone looks like me. Hi, everyone. Their families. Come on, Dad. I'm finding all of my family roots here. And they'll try to make sense of humour. Yeah, I guess I'll just write some comedy about it now. Oh, thank you. Tonight, Steve Wrigley heads to his mother's hometown, Amsterdam. Hi, I'm your nephew Steve. Drowning in Dutch people. We have the worst humour in the world. Oh, this is going to be bad. Will his comedy stand up in the Netherlands? This is the big time, eh? Find out as he goes in search of his funny roots. Steve isn't just wriggly, he's boisterous, energetic and famous for his full-throttle comedy. Three out of five of your ex-girlfriends are gay because you were all the man they were ever going to need. <laughs> Steve's a Wellington boy, but his mum, she's a Dutch lady with an authentic Dutch maiden name. My maiden name is Dick. You could actually legitimately say I'm going over to Holland to meet a bunch of dicks. <laughs> Little skin I did there. Okay, and I'm so excited if you're going to Holland. Last time I remember was when you were three or four years old. When I was there in 2007, I partied so much, I had the mind of a three or four year old. It was this trip that inspired Steve to write the Billy T Award winning set that launched his career. Like all intense stoner experiences, paranoia went, Hello! <laughs> I have a question for you! As well as reuniting with his long lost Dutch relatives, Steve will also have the chance to gain pearls of wisdom from his 95-year-old grandfather. I'm quite nervous. My memory of our family is that they're quite straight, quite strict. Well, I've seen your comedy shows, and I think if you just keep it simple and not offend anyone, <laughs> you'll be fine. I can't help but be offensive. Like, I just start talking, and as words come out of my mouth, I inevitably say something retarded. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Well, Steve wants to know if the Dutch share his unique humour by finding out what makes them laugh. In terms of what I know about the Dutch sense of humour, it's really just my mum. When I try to think about the stuff she laughed at, it normally all revolves around the cat doing something silly. The cat eats too much, the cat poos in an unusual place, which could mean that Holland is where the massive spate of YouTube-related cat videos have come from. Bound for Amsterdam, Steve's flying high for 27 hours. Amsterdam, there's a lot of fog. Steve's on a mission to track down his cousin. Hopefully not in the red light district. I'm nervous I'm meeting one of my uh, Dutch relatives for the first time. I haven't seen any of them for over two decades and there's a lot of different things I'm kind of worried about. What's she going to think of me? and What am I going to think of her? Like, she's my cousin. But you kind of want your cousin to be attractive. Like, what if I open the door and she's like a bit of a minger? Like, she's real ugly. And you're like, oh, hey, ugly relative. How do you mask that, eh? Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. You too. So far, so good. But in only three days, Steve will be on an Amsterdam comedy club stage. So he's eager to see if he can slip in some of his old Dutch jokes. Uh, I was just going to talk about, like, the last time I got here, I got really stoned and I went to the red light district. Uh -huh. How is that funny? I mean, it's, that's, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like day to day life to us. I'm so glad you weren't one of the judges for the Billy T Award back in the day, just going, okay. You so. would not be award winning then. <laughs> no, if it no. was about, no. What do Dutch people laugh at? I think Dutch people have a really dry sense of humour. So it's, okay. I mean, it happens that you make jokes and people don't realise that you're actually joking until it's like, oh, wait a minute. So just, you're not being serious. So you've got to be subtle as well. You, you're, yeah, you should try. Oh, no. <laughs> you're screwed. There is like, you know, I am the opposite of that. I like yell my punchlines really loud. I'm. I, I make a big point of the fact that because I've only got so few jokes in my in my comedy that when I do do one, I'm like, here's the joke, everyone. Uh huh. Okay. No laugh. Meeting Karen was great, but it looks like my plans of just coming over here and straight word for word doing my Billy T set about smoking pot and being a tourist uh, out of the question. It's great. Yeah, I'll see you it's tonight. Good. Like instead of taking the easy road, I'm actually going to have to do some work and write a joke for the first time in my life. Well. It's a day of firsts for Steve, 
Next, he's going to a nearby town to meet the rest of his Dutch family for the first time since he was a boy. I'm really neurotic. I'm going to constantly be second guessing everything I'm doing. And I'll be walking down the front door of the house and I'll be like, am I supposed to take my shoes off? Do I not take my shoes off? Is there a shoe protocol that I am observing, not observing? Should I have worn clogs? What if it's offensive to ask whether or not I'm supposed to take off my shoes? These are the things that will be going through my head. At least it's time for me to face the music. Oh. Hello. Hello. Stephen. Hi, I'm your nephew, Stephen. Hello. May I come in? Yes, come in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Ina, should I take my shoes off or just leave them on my feet? I'll leave them on. Okay, cool, thanks. As well as his aunt, Steve's meeting his uncle, another uncle, his cousin, another aunt, and two more cousins. It's nice to meet you, Annalika. Oh, we, we met when you were one and I was three. But... Oh, I remember it really well. Yep, yeah. I did a lot of pooping. And for the special occasion, his aunt's cooked up this. And it's called snet. It's pea soup. Yeah. But snet also means rubbish. <laughs> if there's one rule I live my life by, it's never eat something that looks like someone's already eaten it. I've got to go and see Opa, right? Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen him since. So it was really, really small. Yeah. And one thing I really want to do is make him laugh. Mm -hmm. What's his sense of humour? What does he laugh at? Um, I hardly dare to say it, <laughs> but he, he used to laugh a lot about poo and pee. <laughs> Who would pee? Well, those are two things that I am really good at making jokes about. Okay. Yeah, and jokes about vomiting. I'm gonna go for one of these guys. So this is genuinely a thing. This is really... Dutch food. Dutch food. Look at my father, he already finished it. <laughs> okay. What do you think? I gotta be really honest with you guys. Um, Pretty disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna eat the whole thing. Yeah. I'm gonna see Opa, and uh, one thing I really want to do was make him laugh. You know. I think he's gonna try to make you laugh as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw him like I don't know, weekly maybe even when I was growing up. So he would take me on his lap and make up the stories with his weird jokes in it, and we would just always laugh. And he has always been a joke. But do you think there's kind of jokes or whatever that? maybe kind of define who we are as dicks. I know that sounds. <laughs> Do you think we have like a, a very dry sense of humor or I don't know, what's the opposite of that? Like, juicy. <laughs> juicy. <laughs> they weren't at all what I thought. They were funny, welcoming. I'm drowning in Dutch people. <laughs> they were my family. But the thing I'm most uh, excited about is I remember who my grandfather is now. He's not this strict guy who was a fun, storyteller who made things up on the spot, kept people entertained, and most important of all, he loves poo and fart jokes. Comedian Steve Wrigley is making sweet moves to find his funny roots. He's come to the Netherlands, his mother's native country, and today he's exploring Amsterdam. On a bicycle. <laughs> he wants to meet the local residents and find out what gives them the giggles. Here's someone who looks like they're having a bad day, must be Dutch. Excuse me, are you Dutch from Holland? Definitely Dutch. What do you think is funny to Dutch people? Everything is funny in the Dutch peoples because uh, they are very serious. Oh my God. <laughs> Is there anything off the top of your head that you think is oh. the Dutch sense of humour? Yeah, most thing is the sarcasm. Sarcasm? Yes. People say that's the worst kind of humour. Well, then we have the most worst humour in the world. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Was there all sarcasm right there? <laughs> thank you. No, not thank you. Stab. I like to see people fall on their ass. <laughs> <laughs> we could laugh about farts or... Like anything, <laughs> it's just silly. So you have to fart, you have to hurt yourself, and you have to be very sarcastic about yourself. So if I fell over, then farted, farts. and then stood up and went, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> then we're all laughing. Obviously they're all ready for Christmas. 
Christmas is a special time of year for the Dutch. It's a chance for them to really show their true colours. Hello, children. It's me, Santa Claus. And I like to dress up small black children and make them dance on my float. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is just, to me, that is funny. There's racism, there's casual racism, and now there's commercial racism, which is a whole other level. Well, whether it's naughty or nice, Santa's little helpers have been known in the Netherlands as Black Peters for centuries. I want to find out if there are Dutch people who are actually concerned about his weird little gollywog kids. <laughs> what can you tell me about Santa Claus Hi. and the Black Peters? Ah, Santa Claus. <laughs> a lot of people nowadays uh, think uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of racism. Hey, he's, he's stupid. Why are they black? That's what I was saying. They used to clean the chimney. They're black because all of the dirt is on their face. And... Then you're saying black people are dirty. Yeah. And what does Santa Claus do with bad children? Well, but he, take, uh, he takes the bad children uh, in a big bag. And he beats them with, <laughs> with sticks. It's kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> so... This <laughs> is Sue Bradford. This is not the country for you, OK? <laughs> One thing I'm finding about the Dutch sense of humour that really connects with my own is that they love being wrong and they love being inappropriate, but joyously so, you know. Whether it's laughing at someone falling down, laughing at your own misfortune, or laughing at the fact that your national holiday is dominated by tiny racist oompa loompas, there's a sense of humour there that I really like. Steve's starting to grasp the complex nature of Dutch racist toilet humour. So, with his gig in less than 24 hours, he gets to work on his set. I'm feeling okay about my material. I've got, like, several ideas on a piece of paper, but no actual jokes. And I don't want to be one of those comedians who just gets up there and goes, Hey, how about, how about that snurt? That's pretty disgusting. I can do Richard Till. I can be like, hello New Zealand, it's me, Richard Till. I've got jokes about snurt. I've got jokes about a racist Santa Claus. I've got jokes about Germans all available at Countdown. Shop smarter, New Zealand, and buy Steve Wrigley's stupid jokes. Stuck for ideas, the Countdown really is on. So, Steve's taking a research trip to the comedy cafe to see what and who he might be up against tomorrow night. If he can understand them, that is. Op een gegeven moment de fiets zit, waar je ingaat door een BMW 5 met een spoiler. En je hoort gewoon. Someone Steve can understand is host and expat Kiwi, Bob McLaren. You know those things in the middle of the city, there's a few animals. If, if you're walking along, you go, hmm, I feel like stroking a donkey. Oh, look, there's one. <laughs> A kinderborderai. We don't have that word in English, no. In New Zealand, if you have a children's farm, you're going to get arrested. Bob's an old-school Kiwi comic who moved to Amsterdam 16 years ago with his Dutch wife. So it's a good opportunity for Steve to pick the brains of this expat expert. What would be the biggest difference you'd notice in their sense of humour? But they like the intelligent humour. We get all the English, all the American, all the circuit players through here, so they're pretty used to that pretty high standard, you know? Damn it. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> How do stories go? Love it. Don't they you? love stories. Really? Telling stories is what it's about. That's good news. That's really good. Do they laugh at themselves? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they like that. Because I've got a big plan to kind of hit this Black Peter thing. Oh, yeah, do that, yeah. Right? So good stuff here, then, is something that, like, it kind of hits a nerve, but is cleverly done. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Well, I'm probably more nervous now than I was before, <laughs> to be honest. The cleverest thing I can do right now is run for the hills. But there are no hills in Holland, so really i just got to run headfirst into the dike. See, that sounded bad. This is... Oh, this is going to be bad. This is not going to be good. Steve Wrigley's big night has arrived. In an hour, he'll be on stage at the Comedy Cafe, performing his first ever gig to a Dutch audience. 
I still don't know if I've got any good jokes, you know. But if everything goes bad, I'll just fall back onto my old material and bluff my way through it. Even if I completely fall on my ass and fail on stage, I guess that'll be funny to watch. So it's going to be entertaining for somebody. That's what I always tell myself. It's a huge convoluted plan. It's high concept put together in a very small amount of time. There's definitely going to be some small disaster happening on stage tonight. But we'll see. They'll either laugh or they won't. Ladies and gentlemen, our next act comes from a pair of islands called New and Zealand. Please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Steve Wrigley. <laughs> This is the big time, eh? Travel like, what, like 32 hours by plane? And this is what I said, I was like, book me at a gig for 32 people. <laughs> and they found 19, so <laughs> I'm pretty stoked. Um, like, I've noticed some things about you Dutch folk that I find a little bit disturbing. Our Santa Claus is not so racist. <laughs> what is up? with your Santa Claus and this little black slave midgets. Dude, I don't know what the story is. I just see it in shop windows. You've got this happy dude with a white beard and these little black face midget things. It's the most racist. And I said to someone, I was like, that is racist. And they were like, Dutch. They were like, no, it's not racist. We're just, that the reason that they're black is because they were all dirty. <laughs> And I'm like, you're just saying all black people are dirty. Like, it gets more racist as it goes on. And then they're like, no, this is just a holiday. We have from there for the children. And I'm like, what do you tell the children about them? And they're like, well, we tell the children that if they're naughty, then the Santa Claus will come, put them in a sack and beat them with sticks. <laughs> So not only is he racist, but he abducts and tortures children. <laughs> and you know what the Dutch do when you say that? They go, yeah, it's good, right? <laughs> you guys are so proud of how bad it is, man. There's one thing I've noticed about the Dutch. The worse something is, the more you guys enjoy it, eh? And I know that for a fact, because I have got family here, and I went to meet with them, and I said, can we have a traditional Dutch meal, thanks? And they said, sure. And I said, can we eat something nice? And they said, sure. And I said, I'm really excited to eat this traditional Dutch meal. And they said, here you go. And I looked down at a bowl of snot, and they said, this is called schnat. <laughs> like, you've taken good things, right? Potatoes, they're good. Carrots are nice. Peas are great. Sausages are good. These are four things that all taste good. And you guys managed to make the only food in the world that is exactly the same going in as it is going out. <laughs> really enjoyed the show. Of course, the, the jokes about the Dutch, uh, they're the most funny because we know. <laughs> we know how we are, but when yeah, somebody else tells it, it's more funny. I was... Uh kind of amazed because most of the foreign comedians the first time they're in another country they're they're gonna make a few mistakes but uh, he didn't make any uh, according to me so. thank you I thought Steve was really funny as soon as he was on stage he was comfortable and he just did what he wanted to do he was just telling stories and the way he tells them it reminds me of our grandfather I think that's yeah sort of like a family thing basically I mean they laughed right so that's good um I was really nervous before I went up. I was like, are they going to get me? Are they going to understand what I'm saying? Are they going to enjoy it? But yeah, I'm really happy. It's Steve's last morning of the trip. But before he says goodbye to the Netherlands, he's going to say goodbye to his 95-year-old grandfather. You know, I don't think I'm going to do any jokes. It's almost gone beyond just wanting to make him laugh now. It's about taking what I thought he was and the picture that I'd made of him in my mind of this sort of strict and full-on guy and replacing what I had imagined him to be in my head with who he really is. Um, feeling nervous. I just was looking at my outfit in the mirror and I was like, do I look like a grandson who's dressed up nicely to go and see his granddad or do I look like an Italian pimp? <laughs> Hello. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Opa. 
Please leave you. <laughs> so good to see you again. <laughs> I am. Um, You've changed since the uh, last time I saw you. <laughs> I'm a bit bigger, I think. <laughs> um, I bought you something. Uh, this is me and my wife. Is it for me? Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> very much. It's so good to see you. When I saw you the last time, you were about uh, five years old. Or... I remember you teaching me en passant the chess move. Yes. That's the clearest memory I have of yes. when you were in New Zealand. You have a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I can remember. <laughs> I have a question I've asked everybody that I've met, which is, um, what do you think is the Dutch sense of humour? What do you find funny? What makes you laugh? Echte humor is a lach bij een traan. A laugh real, by a tear. Laugh and a tear. That's a Dutch proverb. How's that how we ask every single person in Holland what's the Dutch sense of humour? And we talk to a 95 year old man and he just sums it up. Not just the Dutch sense of humour, but I think the Kiwi sense of humour as well. With a laugh comes a tear, I'm going to carry that with me every day for the rest of my life. That is, he's fantastic. What a legend. Goodbye, Opa. Bye bye. Now, I know for a fact now, after meeting him, that my sense of humour comes from here. When he was a young father, he was making my mother laugh. My mother would make me laugh, and it has come down the family, you know. My comedy roots are definitely here. Not necessarily in that rest home. Um, they're not in there, but they're here. They're around here and in here. Uh, I've taken away that not only are my funny roots in Holland, but I'm really excited to be reconnected with my family. I can't wait to come over here with my own family for my grandfather's 100th birthday, which I know he'll make it to. Uh, but mo most importantly, I want my children to be here and experience racist Christmas. Because what, what is Christmas without a little bit of family racism and a touch of domestic violence? It's nothing. <laughs> Next week, find out if tall Paul Ego can stand up to the Brits. That's London, still quite old world. They haven't even gone digital yet. As he goes in search of his funny roots. How are you going? You right? Good. Six of you all right? The rest of you are not quite sure? Funny Roots was made with funding from NZ On Air.